Good, yes, morning. Good morning, everybody. It's not afternoon, it is morning. Welcome to the 23, 2022, 2023. Jesus Christ, the 2023-24 football season. I'm all excited because we've got the old Bolton derby coming up. See Mark's in there. I'm getting all excited. Top of the table. Uh, let's say a few good mornings. Lovely to see people. Ken, good morning. Dylan, lovely to see you. Carl, lovely to see you. Brian, morning from Geordie Land. Jamie Power, morning. James Oldfield. Marky boy biting his fingernails. Lovely to see you. Mucker, Neil Cave. Hope the weather's good in Guernsey. Neil Claxton, lovely to see you. Jason Reynolds, yo. Jason's going a little bit sort of down with the kids. Got his baseball cap on the wrong way around. Clearly. Paul Hill, hello. Martin in Lincoln, hello. David Scobie, the great Andy Richmond. Morning, Andy. I haven't spoke for ages. I have to have a chat this week, my friend. Hope you will. Uh, Andrew Thornhill, Gareth Cooper, Jorgen, hello from uh, whatever part of the uh, Scandinavian Isles you're on. Gary Titnagar, Sutcliffe. Oh, God, loads of Jason Caton, Visualite, Damo, good morning. Tim Clark, Anish, good morning. Klaus, that uh, hips is in. Hips jumping up and down, trying to get a ticket for the Villa game. Rick Pritchard, morning, Andy. Steve Mander, Pui, morning. Ali, morning. Michael, morning. Michael, morning. Michael, Mick and Stu. Um, right, so in the newsletter yesterday, I put a couple of correct score trades, um, which we're going to do now. We also might enter the Kyoto Sanger game at half time. Uh, I'm going to show you off some new toys, some stuff that we'll be using this year. Um, to trade with, um, but let's talk you through these two trades first, which are kicking off at 12 o'clock. So if I get done quickly, we can get these on. Uh, if you've got your newsletters, the FTS newsletter, um, the games are in there. And uh, we are looking at, uh, and it is good if you use, you can do this on um, the Betfair interface, but Genuinely, if you're going to start trading, particularly things like correct scores, you will do better uh, using BitAngel. And we don't get anything for it, but there is a code FTS22 gets you £50 off a BitAngel uh, sub. So we are going to be looking at Fortuna Dusseldorf game versus Paderborn and Greuther Firth versus St. Pauli. Um, and we're just going to play them a slightly different way. As I say, the whole purpose of these trading is to show you different ways to trade and then you decide what sort suits you. I don't do a massive amount of correct score trading uh, myself. used to do a bit more back in the day, but uh, one of the main reasons I find is the markets take so long to settle down at times. I, I, I've done a couple in the week in the build-up to this, done one last night, and um, just takes a long while. The method I show you now, you can actually bet and leave and make money, but obviously you'll have that variance of correct scores. So what we're going to do in these games, we are going to Dutch 2-1, 1-2 and 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little sheet and explain why. Um, but the way you would do that on Bet Angel is go select the game, go to the correct score market and use the Dutching tab. Um, enter your stake, then Dutch with a stake off. There's one of the boxes you can put £10 in, £20, whatever. We want to use 75% of a point. That's all we want to use. We want to keep 25% over to try and use later on if we need it. Um, for example, if it goes 2-2, we might back 3-2 either way, or if it goes... Um, if, if it's only nil-nil at half time, we might do a couple of one nils or something like that. Um, we need to very often have to need to see how the game pans out. Um, so on the Dutching tab on Bet Angel, if you're using the Betfair interface, you select the three scores in the correct score market, and then there's a button that, at the top of that that says stake above the bet box, and you can uh, enter your stake in there and it'll work out your stakes across the scores. Um, but those of you who've done the golf with me, I do this very similar. When I trade these games, I trade them very similar to the golf markets. Uh, the most I can lose is a point. Um, normally, I, I, I get, as I say, I'll get 75.75 uh, of a point, and I've got 0.25 over. Um, but why did we pick these two games? Why do we pick these three scores? That's all it actually comes down to, stuff like this. It's why do we trade games and what for? I've just got to keep an eye on that Kyoto game, but I'll return to that in a minute. So uh, I'll show off my first new toy of the year. Hold on a second. Let me just get the old screen sharing. I've not done this for a while now. I've got to get back into the routine here. Uh, uh, 
Okay, so we've got a new sheet here that I can uh, look at correct scores. Um, so both these games, I mean, I tend to have standard sort of things that I look at. Uh, for me, odds on over 2.5 goals. We're going to trade correct scores. We obviously need goals in the game. Um, and I'm so I set that at 101 to 1.99. I want odds on over 2.5. Uh, this is in this dashboard. And both these games on Poisson numbers are between 3.51 and 4. Uh, on six game poissons so when we get to those bigger numbers I tend to go up in 0.5 so I'll kind of do 0.25 um, you know 2 to 2.25 2.26 to 2.5 up to sort of 3.5 and then when it gets higher than that I'll start doing it in 0.5 just to make sure that we get enough games um, included um, so I've got another toy to show you but I just want to check those numbers so this is this is basically today's sheet so the two games we are looking at, he says, are here, yeah. there, and one is 3.92, one is 3.82. I'll just make that bigger for you. So these are the two games we're looking at here, there, of, of people who've got FTS advanced data, and we've got 3.92 uh, match XG in the sixth game for Fortuna Düsseldorf game and 3.82 in the Greuther Firth game. Um, so I've set that at 3.51 to 4, odds on, and obviously we're in German Bundesliga 2. And I can click this button and look at the speed of this, and I built it myself. Uh, so this now tells me what I've searched. I've searched German Bundesliga 2. I've got, uh, I didn't put any home odds in. I've put over 2.5 odds in of 1.01, 1.99, uh, XG between 3.51 and 4. And it's gone through the database and it said we've got 82 games there. The average goals per game in a makeup like this in this league is 3.2. So we know our model works. We're generating goals. Uh, and it lists me the top five are scoring. Uh, occurring scoreline so we're kind of getting a sort of the model approach using the xg model and then a frequentist approach in what score lines do these does this model tend to throw up and you can see there the five top score lines are two one out of 82 games it's been two one ten times it's been one two eight times it's been two two seven times it's been one one six times and one nil five times so i start with the top three so the top three scores that we've got Two, the three we're going to Dutch one, two, two, one, and two, two um, account for thirty percent of the results of the games when we're in this, uh, and when we put that in odds, top three implied odds, it is three point two eight. That is where we've ended up, and the top five scores that we've got here, so including the one, 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 nil, add up to forty three point nine percent of the scores in this model, uh, and top five implied odds of two point two eight. When I, I need just to stop that share now. Sorry, this is, this is one of the issues with this is I have to drive around. So we had odds of 3.28. If you lose me, bear with me. Um, and if I load up the game into, I've got the Dusseldorf Paderborn correct score game. And if I put my bet into that market, I am getting odds of 4.0. So our combined odds of what's happened so far is 3.28. Dutching those three scores pays you just over, just literally bang on almost three to one. So odds of four. So we've got value in what's happened compared to what we can get today uh, in the Fortuna Dusseldorf game. So if people are on that one, if you want to put that the game in, then you can uh, get that done. Uh, and then I'm just going to load up the... Um, the game. Hold on a second. I'm just going to flip around screens. Get the Breuther Firth game. Correct score Dutching, and it is one two two one and two two. And again, in the almost exactly the same as the, uh, just literally bang on 4.0, just over 3 to 1. So we're getting value on what's happened and what we're doing now. We, by doing it correct scores, of course, we could just back over 2.5 or 1.6, but you don't have to have big more money on. Um, we're giving ourselves some wiggle room as the game goes on that we can negotiate that position. If I can get anything 50% and above um, as the match plays out, then I'll be more than happy. Um, to do that. 
Uh, obviously, if it stays nil-nil, there's not much you can do, but we've got that little bit of money that we've kept back that we could lay a late goal or whatever it may be. So if you want to go on, if anybody is playing along, if you want to go on and put those bets on, um, by all means do so. I don't know whether people are playing along or just watching and learning. Um, let me get the sheet, the sheet back up. Um, Right, and before we continue any further, um, I've just got to check this Kyoto game. Oh, one second. Fucking dearie me. Right back, in, right back into it. Beautiful. Late but here. Well, there's a surprise, Saxy. There's a surprise, son. Uh, bless him. He's been working this morning. I had him on the tools this morning, doing some bits when I realised we'd do this early. Check there's a goal at the yeah, end, Rosaka. Yep, yeah, got that. Kashim's done, that's okay. I'm just going through these Japan games, right? Coyota, uh, Coyota, Sanger, right? So, those games are going to kick off in Germany in three minutes. Coyota, um, Sanger. Uh, if anybody wants to play on here, might as well give you this one. I feel guilty if I don't, if I do it all on my own and you don't get it. Coyota, Sanger. I am laying. Uh, under 1.5 holes. Holes? Flippity <laughs> dearie me. God almighty. What is going on? I am laying under 1.5 goals. I've got my goal fed on. Uh, under 1.5 goals now, but I will exit for a maximum of a point loss. So if uh, at the minute I'm going to lay at six, so it's it's 6.2 to lay, I will put it in at six. Um, but if it gets to three, so let's say you lay ten pounds, if it go, if there's no goal in within about the first twenty odd minutes of the second half, I would back then double the stakes um, at three, so that I get, uh, I get, I, I can only lose a point. So I am laying under one point five goals at Kyoto uh, at six. I will be exiting so that I only the maximum I lose is a point um, on that. Right, is that all clear? Any questions? Anyone want to talk about anything? Filthy mind holes. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't know where that came from, son. I've no idea. Um, right, I want to get this coyote. Right, let's Again, when I do trades like this Kyoto one, I always offer to market, so I wouldn't take the 6.2 there. I'll take the 6 that is sitting on the back side um, and try and get that going. And then now we're into the stage where um, a lot of these things turn out to be, particularly when you've traded in 2 1, one 2 and 2 2. And there, I kind of look for games that create goals and the highest score lines, because obviously, if it's 1 1 1 0, that's where you're only getting seven point naught. So you don't get a great deal of value around the Dutching um, numbers. So here we got three good scores 2 1, 1 2, 2 2 in these games um, to play around with. Morning from Edinburgh. Lovely sunny Edinburgh. Get yourself down the witchery, Mick. I set fire to a menu in there. There you are. Um, I'm not on purpose, by the way. I didn't go in and start burning their menus. I just didn't realise they had one of those little tea lights on the table and rested the menu on it. And all of a sudden, smoke started wafting up. Which scores in? Fucking listen and read the newsletter. Ooh. Two one one two two two. I don't know how their brains work up in Warwick or wherever it is. I can't share it no because I'm it's on a different screen. I can only the way this is I'm linked. Oh my good god. Which game? Which game? Which game which? Fortuna Dusseldorf and Greuther Firth. Two one one two two two. Was in the witchery in December with a Tinder date. I can't share my Betfair screen because I've got it linked to my. I've got three screens here. I've got it linked to my. Um, what do you call it? Screen my the Excel screen. 
I felt that showing you the actual workings is a bit more important. Right, let's get this up again. Hold on a second. Right, I just think people don't. I think people just don't pay attention. See, it's not like old bat angels and all them other boys who just do their lovely video present presentations, is it? Right, so we did this bit once. So I highlighted these two games for you. Groyth the Firth Paderborn, I highlighted the six game XG, 3.92, 3.82. I sent you a newsletter out with it in yesterday. I told you it was 211222, Dutch the scores. I use this sheet here to explain why we're dutching those scores. 211222, they account for 30% of what's happened. 3.28, we're getting odds around about 4.0. If you keep doing this all day long for the rest of your life, you cannot fail to make money. You could bet and run and you couldn't fail to make money unless you are a complete and utter bell end. And we have definitely got some who qualify on that count. There we go. Right, how are we doing? What a beautiful presentation. Sack me now. Same scores, both games. Same scores, both games. Help me, please. Help me. Help me. Sam will come running in thinking I've collapsed or something now. If you've got the newsletter, they're in there. I think if Spurs get beat 3 then I'm just going to jump off the Dartford crossing on the way home. All right, have we got it? Game's gone. Games are on. 2-1, two, 1-2, one, one, two, two, two. Groyth the Firth and um, Fortuna Dusseldorf. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> um, and I have laid under 1.5 goals at Kyoto Sanga. Um, newsletter, read it before doing anything else. Takes two minutes. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bob, because that is why one of the reasons we started the newsletter is I can put trades out on Friday. I can do sessions over the weekend and show you how we arrive at them. You can then go, I like that method. I'll do that one. You can't do everything. But you, from all the methods that we cover, the over 2.5 with the correct score cover, over 1.5, 20, 27, 35, first half goal 1.5 with 0 0.5 cover. This one, you pick, I like that, or you pick a selection of games and think, I'll do that one, that one, and that one. Off we go. And you pull. You're on the firm. Spurs will improve incrementally under, oh, I think they will, yeah. It will take a bit of time. I uh, don't expect that we'll be challenging that much this season. Maybe have a cup run if we're, it takes it seriously, but I think he'll get us better over a couple of years. I do think we need someone up top still. Um, now Kane's gone. <laughs> this is comedy gold. It is. Yeah, it is, son. I'm loving it. See, I mean, I've got nowhere to go, though. See, if this was a podcast, I could smash my hands. I've got to sit and maintain decorum. Um, where were we? Yeah, I do think we need somebody up top. I don't think... Um, I don't think... Um, Richarlison is going to be the boy personally. I had hoped for us when we signed him, but I've just not seen anything that excites me. Um, ah, right, so Fortuna Dusseldorf straight off, nil one. We're off the mark. Here we go. Goal's coming. Get that to 1 1, then you're beautiful. So if you get to 1 1, then you've got the next two goals covered. You've got 2 1 and 1 2 covered. Uh, and then you've got two two covered. So you go on. Is this being recorded? I'll do me a favor. Please kill me now. Someone's doing this. Someone's. What have I done? What have I done? I've done nothing. We've lost Harry Kane. Well, I've, I've paid my penances. It's always available, Neil. These they don't disappear. They sit on YouTube forevermore. Um. That's it. I don't know. I, I, kill me now. I just wanted to do some football trading. This is week one, week one of the season. I'm going to let you all off. I'm just assuming you've all hibernated through June and July. Christ. 
What's Andy's newsletter horses like? Let's do them instead, shall we? Shall we just bin this off and do the horses? Right, Dusseldorf, nil one. This one deserves a reply. What was? Ah, oh dear. Beautiful. Um, right, I was going to show you another sheet, but I don't think I will. I don't think I've got it in me. I don't think I've got the power to get through it. Um, somebody let me know when Coyote Sanger kicks off for the second half. You'll be able to watch it back then. You'll be able to frame it. You can download it. Watch it when you're walking the dog. Sorting you out next June, someone I'm in Ireland. You might get the old headbutt. <laughs> Kill. It's a wine. This is a wine. This is like one of them Ant and Deck shows, isn't it now? This is like one of those Ant. It's definitely Goal at Fortuna. We covered that about five minutes ago. This is definitely, isn't it? Ant and Deck are going to come walking in in a minute and go, we've got you. What is it they do? What's that thing called? Jeremy Beadle back in my day. Christ almighty. <laughs> I've got another, I've committed to another 21 of these. I don't know whether I can do it. Um, completely gone. I am completely and utterly gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I never had so much fun with my clothes on. Right. Um, I am gone. Right, no, I was going to show you another sheet. So while we're, while we're waiting for goals and things to happen, rather than just sit wasting the time, um, obviously you've got tools on FTS. Um, we've got the heat map tool, we've got the mega table tool, and the in play tool um, and then with ultimate we've shown the kevin kelly method so that is on youtube it's the one method that i think certainly everybody on ultimate should be utilizing to trade um it's a really good really good um solid method to use and i know a good few people are using it but obviously if you're not an ultimate member uh, currently you haven't got the means to use it so over the summer i've been working on that for you uh sheet that I called up I'm just going to make it a bit smaller uh, so that I can show it show you it and again we'll be doing some trades off this this isn't something you've got right now by the way you can't go and grab it anywhere uh, the only person who's got this currently is me um, and one other who's testing it for me um, but let me share the screen I have lost my will to live but here we go um, share window share there right so we've got this sheet here so the kevin kelly method basically is a method where um it derived from heat maps really so years ago i showed, I showed how to build heat maps of odds brackets it's and then apply those odds brackets to teams or leagues and you could decide if you want to trade and um when i do these things a bit like that i have no idea who's doing what or who's paying attention or whatever but kevin liked the method he went away and when we did the summer school in 2021, he used that as his 100 days and has carried it on. He's now six, 700 days in. As I say, there's a video on YouTube talks to you all about it. And the, and the premise of that basically is selecting a team in an odds bracket. Uh, so if the team was 1.8, they'd be in the odds bracket 1.76 to 2 uh, and see how many times have that team been in that odds bracket and when they are what's gone on how have they got on and kevin looks at and the sheet built looks at the home win market so let's say top number 1.76 to 2 let's say top 1.8 how many times in the premier league have top number been 1.8 um and obviously then your opponent's odds are automatically sorted out whoever you're playing because if you're 1.8 your opponent's odds are going to fall between the bracket on that side how many times do they fall in that bracket how many times do they win uh, and kevin does it literally if they take the league greens up so when we when we thank you andy when we knock that so the kyoto games kicked off so i've laid under 1.5 goals but i am going to exit 
the key is exiting. I'm exiting for a point. You do not want to be sitting there waiting for it. Hopefully we get the early goal um, and we don't uh, need to worry, but just letting you know, I will be exiting. So basically this sheet enables us to do that, but to do it for all the markets. So just to give you a, a guide. So let's do Tottenham tonight. We might as well go and I'm going to just blow this up a little bit so you can see that we can look at this and see Tottenham. We know it's their first home game, so they're grey form. The match XG tonight is 2.08. I think Tottenham's XGs will change considerably through the season. That's six games. Obviously, Tottenham were garbage last year. Um, the longer-term XG, the season XG, which looks at more fixtures between Tottenham and United, generates 3.3, which is more where I would have it. Um, there, but Tottenham are odds. What are we? I don't. I haven't even looked. That's how uninterested I am. Three point naught. You're having an absolute giraffe, really. How can they be two point four two favourites? Honestly, flipping it. Three point naught. Uh, Tottenham. So I've got a little box here that I can click, and I can just click this, and it goes off. I've got. A lot of sheets open and it tells me that uh, in the Premier League, Tottenham have actually only been 2.76 uh, three times. They've only won one of those games. Perhaps I'll change my mind. Um, obviously, three games is a tiny sample. 33% um, win uh, implied odds of three. And if you back Tottenham when they were this price in all those three games, you would be minus 0.14 points down. So I can do that, but now I can also click and go, uh, what about over 2.5, for example? So I can find the over 2.5 column there. Tottenham are there i'm just using that tottenham game so the over 2.5 is 1.57 click the team now when it's been man united do have far advantage you're quite correct uh Damo, you're 100 spot on um so i can click this for the team for uh tottenham 1.57 so now it's looking at the over 2.5 market so how many times have tottenham been um Priced between 1.51 and 1.75 for over 2.5. Now there's been 20 games of that. So whilst we haven't been 2.75 to 3 very much, there's been 20 games where Spurs have had over 2.5, uh, 1.51 or 1.75. 15 of those games have gone over 2.5. Strike rate 75%, which equals odds of 1.33. Uh, and uh, if you backed every single game there, you would be 4.92 points up. Now, what I do with information like that is we don't have to bet over 2.5 and leave it. You could do. Um, but again, it would be a game I'd look to trade. I wouldn't want to go in at 1.57. Personally, I'd let the game kick off. I'd let it get up to 1.8. I know that 75% of Tottenham's games are in this have over 2.5 goals. If we click over 1.5 goals, we'll probably find that Let's have a look, because obviously the odds will correspond. So I can go over and check the 1.5, which is only 1.19. Click team. This sheet works really quickly when it's on its own, by the way. It's only the fact I've got a couple of big sheets open down here. Um, it's normally fairly instantaneous, but my dashboard sheet is a massive old Excel sheet. Uh, still one nil at Paderborn, no goal. So 22 games now in the 1.5 bracket, 20 of them have had two goals or more. So I'm just building up data here saying that at the prices, can I make money? Yes. And do these game, games have goals? Yes. So I start to build a trading picture of, right, how do, all this becomes game selection and then how do you want to trade it? They're the only two things that you never need to worry about. What's my game selection? Why have I picked that game? And then how am I going to trade it? Rather than thinking, oh, there might be a goal there, I fancy that, or somebody's had eight shots on target. Everything I do is price orientated and what's actually happened when we've modelled these games out. So Tottenham's games here, we've got 22, whilst Tottenham, the, the home win's not an option, we've got 22 games where they've been priced 101 to 1.25 for over one and a half. 20 of those games have gone over one and a half. We've got... 75% of the games when they've been priced between 1.51 and 1.75 have gone over two and a half. Um, so 
I, I would play that game. Where for me, I would wait till this started. This over two and a half price started to hit one point five seven, uh, started to hit around one point eight. I'd drip in over two point five, and I would trade on goals. You could green on the first goal. Invariably, what I do when the first goal goes in, I sit on it. I've got an average entry price. Let's say it's two. Uh, the market goes back down to one point four, one point five. I sit there then and wait. If it gets back to two. Uh, and there isn't a second goal, I can exit for nothing. If I get the second goal, we're obviously then going to go down to 1.18, 1.19. I can green up then or remove my liability depending on how long's left in the game. Invariably, if it was in the first half, let's say it got 2 0 by 40 minutes, um, I Spurs are two up within 40 minutes, I would leave it. Uh, I'd just remove my liability and give me the rest of the game for the goal. If it was sort of 50, 55 minutes, I'd probably bring it up. I mean, I'm a big remove liability man, but for you guys, probably just green it up and then you don't have to worry. Uh, the one thing, again, it's a mental thing, removing liability, and I did a test with a couple of people that it's sitting there, how many times can you sit there and not get the goal and it bother you? You know, if you take the green, you're always just building your confidence up to grab it. But the other thing with the thing we get now is, well, so we can look at the goal markets, is if we look at that match XG, so we look at this game here, uh, and 3.32, I think I was looking at the wrong fix already, I was looking at the half-time figure, wasn't I? Um, I can also now look at over 2.5 market here, so I can select over, sorry, over 2.5 market here, there, I can click that button and it will fizz over, am I in the right? No, I'm not, that's why I'll go in the wrong way. Season XG there, 3.32. So I can click the little lightning thing and it goes and finds the price bracket that Spurs are in for over 2.5. I can select league and hit XG and it's now going to go and find all the games in this league. You can do it team, but it tends to only be small samples, but it'll go and say, when in this league, we've got this odds for over 2.5 and this XG, what happens then? takes a little bit longer to run because it's looking at the whole league. No goal at Coito, only 1-0 at Paderborn. Obviously, if it stays 0-0 um, in those correct scores, we'll have a look at half-time and see where we're at. I'm just giving you a pre. We're going to use some of this stuff. So you can see here now there's been 50 games where it's been this XG in the Premier League. Um, and only 23 have only gone over two and a half and 46 percent so now we start to get you know you could again you could talk yourself out of everything that doesn't look too fantastic for that game um now so when we check the xg actually in that bracket it's hard to make money oh, we're just going to check the six game one as well and do exactly the same oh, I'm on the wrong side wasn't i wasn't the right side Finding your way around that uh, price on there, 208. See, that's be interesting to see. Candid camera before Jeremy. Yeah, who was that? Candid flipping camera. This is like this was that first 10 minutes. I don't know what's going on. So, again, 15 games where the odds is that we've got that XG 1.8853. So, in effect, now I can check those metrics. I can check Tottenham. I can check the odds of brackets, and then I can check the match XG. F fizz through it. Um, the sheet does run quicker if I do it first thing in the morning on it, just on that sheet on its own. You can fizz through games and um, find some nice angles. So we are going to be using this sheet a bit this year in these sessions, if I can cope. Um, to run through and find some gold trading opportunities uh, for you. Um, right, any questions before we move on? Well, if you're in the Coyoto game, you need to pay attention to that one from certainly from sort of 60 minutes onwards. Um, to make sure you can get yourselves out of it if there's more gold. Um, right, other than that, we, we are going to sit patiently now and wait till uh, 
some goals start to fly in, in these German games. Um, there's nothing else going in Japan. I'm not a massive Japan trader. We did have uh, the Gambro Osaka game this morning for 1.5 in the trading thing. David Nixon. I can't remember David Nixon. I remember Bob Monkhouse. Can't remember David Nixon. You're older than me, art boy. Right, any questions? Any qu you can ask me a question. This is your time. Ask me questions on anything going into the season. Anything you want me to talk about, show you in the coming weeks. We'll be trying to do one of these at least once a week. Um, obviously, we've got an international break coming up in two weeks' time. Um, always annoying, aren't they? Didn't even you. Oh, mug of Southgate. Um, we've all got lionesses tomorrow, aren't we? No? You'll be tuning into the lionesses. Sagsy, you'll have that on someone. You expect you've got the England flag hanging out your window. Um, yeah, so it's all, I always find it's a little bit of a stop start because you have these um, the international breaks. It can be a bit of a pain in the arse. Got that one, then we've got another one in October. Um, but we've got a proper football season, proper bit of work going on. Um, right, yeah, he's up. Oh, Marky boy will be off. Good luck, son. Genuinely, I need, I need like, you know, I like winding you up, but good luck today. Hope you get the result you want. Old big Bolton, Wigan, Derby. Top V, top V, rock, rock bottom versus top, innit, with Wigan's, um, they've started the season all right. You said they would. With their, um, Penalty points. Right, no questions, nothing. Okay. Come on and do a cabaret next week. Have I got any over 2.5 games shortlisted for today? Uh, I have. I have got. Uh, where are they? Hold on a second. I have got. Uh, I had Hansa Rostock. Um, And later, I have got uh, Varberg at 4.30. I've got uh, uh, Dortmund, but it'll be sh too short. Uh, Leon Montpellier, I haven't looked at the price of that, but I imagine that will be short. Um, and uh, Inter Monza. Um, on, yeah, on that list. Which would trade over 2.5 goals. But as I say, all this stuff, the one we did last season, all these will go through. I've got numerous ways I trade, or no, numerous ways I come to games for over 2.5 goals um, in amongst the ones I've shown you. Right, I've got to keep an eye on. Right, we've got the second goal at Gamba. People were. Yeah, we got it on Betfair, didn't we? Got it on Betfair eventually, despite them telling us it wasn't going up. They, they love to tell you a game's not going up, and then they uh, put it up, put it up minutes later. Absolute useless. Absolute genuine shambles they are.
Do, 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 do. Not there. Kaito. Kaito. Oh, screen. Sorry. Diving over. Can't get there. Got to get used to you lot invading my screen again. Right. So Koito is down to 3.7 to 61 minutes gone. So it'll be about 65, 66 minutes that we'll have to exit that. Need a goal in the next four or five minutes. My little Japanese friends, come on. Flipping shooting boots on. Some goals in uh, the old Greuther Firth game. Tim, I like the over 1.5 20, 27, 35. Well, I'll be doing a session on that in the next two weeks, Tim. Um, what are we now? 20, yeah, maybe next week, actually. Um, I'll probably might do those next week. Uh, over 1.5 to 20, 27, 35. Um, way to get some volume up for the guys. I've, I've shared a lot today with the trading group guys. Um, I might, um, yeah, I'll, I can increase that for you using the FTS advanced data and value. I can talk you through that. So we'll do that perhaps next week. I wanted to get the old correct score one running. Some lay the draw trades. Yeah, we can do those, John. That's no problem. That's it. Good, I like this. Yeah, this is what we like. Stuff that you want me to look at can do those. It's got a couple of ways of couple of ways of finding those. So perhaps the first week back after the um, international break, we'll do those. Boring, isn't it? That's why people either give up or deviate from the banana loop. Exactly, it is. Yeah, no, that's exactly what JD has just said there is exactly it. That uh, you're just sitting there waiting now, watching, waiting, keeping an eye on games. Um, and for a lot of people, that's not enough. They just want to be punting away, clicking away, having a bet. Jumping around on bet 365, watching screens, thinking that they can predict when goals are going to come. Um, where basically you've just got to get a list. I mean, I've, I've picked this because I am going to Spurs today, so I, I looked at the early games and these fitted nicely. Um, right, it's at three at uh, Coyoto Sanga. Um, and I like this trade that I've done here, but what you do have to exit, you've got to get out. And there are times when you exit and a goal goes in literally 30 seconds later and you start cursing, but that is the nature of the game. Um, but it is um, it's a really good method. And it is much easier to exit using uh, software as opposed to trying to do it with... Um, you, you, sometimes you have to chase the price a little bit, but you've just got to make sure you get out because you can't afford to lose five or six points. Can never trust them, the old Kyoto's. Yeah, so now we've just got to sit and wait and see if there's any goals anywhere. To sort of get a little equaliser. Or if the first sent poorly. See, people be watching it all, there'll be a first half goal. They dive into that. Um, but obviously, the idea is I'll show you the tools and then we need to get them in a customer base. Um, and then you decide what you want to use and how you want to trade. Klaus, always good to look at this boy. This is the way to do it. 
It's always good to have something to do while waiting. I have a bass guitar that I always play softly while waiting for goals, so I'm not tempted to do stupid things when trading. Like that, Klaus. I like that. With KK system, he decides. Have you any statistical? Have you any statistical ways to choose that game, or is it best to leave it on what I think is the best option from the potential selections? Um, I, if you watch Kevin's video, yeah, he he does it, and then he goes off. One of his key things was only having one better day. I never ever ever put any subjective opinion into any of it. So I, to, I everything on mine is rules based. Does it qualify on that rule? Yes, then I would trade it if I'm about and I'm trading at that time. Um, I mean, if you watch that, I mean, we, we talk about the exasperation at the start of this video. Uh, if you watch Kevin's video, whilst I think we got through it nicely, I was exasperated by people wanting to change it. Um, but the answer to it for me, I don't put my own opinion on things. I've not met anybody ever yet, and genuinely, um, who's been consistently able to do that. I have people who tell me they're brilliant at football trading and they can do this and do that and it never holds up. So I don't ever do that. I just do everything on my real rules based. That's the rules. That's what I want to see. So this correct score, I want to see value in my five score lines, my three score lines against what I can get in the market. It's not saying that the game's going to be there. It's if I keep repeating that over time and time and time again, um, then you come out in front. Like those Kyoto Sanga trade there, we lose a point. They run at about 57%. So for every 100 bets, I am going to lose 43. I know I'm going to lose 43. That was one of them. Um, but every every 100 bets, I'm going to come have 57 winners. So all of a sudden, every 100 bets, I'm making 14 points. Problem with most people is they don't get 100 bets. They'll do 10 or 15. They're, oh, well, that's crap. I ain't doing that. Um, but yeah, I don't... I'm getting back to the... the absolute question you've got no i don't have a uh, you you've got to determine what your rules are what are you going to use your rules and stick to them i think once you start trying to subjectively add bits into it um it all becomes a bit guessy um but kevin's got his you know in effect he has got rules he looks for minimum number of games what he wants to see goals scored um and things goes into a bit uh, with that sheet, you know, if we have the sheet, I've just shown you that analytic sheet where we can do the, If I ever shared that, I would share the rules that I use to find um, trades. At the minute, we've just got the sheet and we're testing it. We've not really had any football in the summer to get, you know, we built it over the summer to get it going. Um, so I'm going to use these sessions to show you ways to use it. Uh, and I'll settle on ways that I like. So I will, I will. Certainly, it's great for the one thing I found looking at it over the first couple of weeks of the season. That's brilliant for one and a half goals. Absolutely superb for finding games. One and a half goals. You've just got to then decide how you're going to trade them. So that Tottenham game there, whatever it was, 20 out of 22, was it? 21 out of 22, uh, over 1.5 goals. You've just basically then got to decide what, how are you going to trade that? Because you don't want to go in at 1.27 for me. So it's one of their games where I'll wait till... 20, 27, 35, or maybe even if it's short a little bit later, you know, if it's nil nil on 30 minutes, I'll start from there. But you've just got to have that's my game, that's my rules, and then stick to those rules right through. Um, and then if games end nil nil or you don't get the goals, there's nothing you can do about it. But you'll, uh, you've got much more chance of coming out on top. Um, just building, you know, all the stuff we've talked about on podcast, building a trading plan. So I've got, I've got tabs and lists of games of different methods that I will work through on a match day, um, provided they meet the criteria. So you can sort it all out in the morning, check prices, um, do it, and we'll try and share as much of this stuff as possible. Uh, you know, we've got requests lay the draw over one and a half. I want to do the first half one point five and zero point five. That's a really good bet trade to have more 1.5 games more ways to find 2.5 games um so I keep saying that there's lots of ways to skin a cat what we could do with is a goal in germany at Greuther firth and just to get things moving So then Jason uses that method. I think Jason's doing nicely with it. Um, 
I think a few people are doing really nicely with it. Applied odds versus Betfair odds are getting value strike rate to start, then filter further. Uh, obviously, Kevin stuck to it one a day. I think, I think, and, and I understand that for some people, one better day isn't enough. You know, particularly if you go through the sheet and you find four or five really good opportunities, how do you narrow that down to one? And fair play to Kevin for having that um, discipline and things. And, and there was reasons why he did that. He had a small bank. He wanted to convince himself he could do it. Um, but I know other people, a, a guy who I've played a couple of games of golf with on FTS over the last 12 months, he does six, seven games. And part of getting it into a format for FTS Advanced is obviously there's more leagues, so there'll be more opportunities. Um, but you've still got to have rules. You can't just go gung-ho into every game thinking, oh, I'll dive in, I've got more games. You know, there's always, I'm always conscious when we have this stuff that, um, you know, that sheet I've just shown you, the one with the analytics box on it, as soon as I sort of got got it where I was happy with it, I thought, I just know people here would find a bet in every game. So you kind of always got that in your back of your mind that do you want to unleash it to people um, who perhaps are lunatics? And that's where, you know, some of you I know, Jason's a good lad, I am well. I don't know enough people and how they behave. And in fact, the, what I do know from experience is a lot of people around punting behave very stupidly. I will say, as if they haven't got a brain. Right. Uh, afternoon, Callum. Afternoon, morning for you, isn't it, son? You're over in the old states, aren't you? Yeah, about, not up early. About half seven. Klaus is playing his guitar. I like it. Look at this. Oh, Plymouth Southampton. It's amazing, isn't it? Plymouth Argyle versus Southampton. So Coyoto chose to score a goal that's just suspended now in the 72nd minute. Wankers. Yeah, wankers. Um. And the reason I do that, that Coyoto one, for example, is more goals are scored in that period than... And, and at the end of the games, obviously, when you factor in 90 minutes and people having a meltdown about how much extra time we're going to have. Uh, I've had that query how many times in the last two weeks. Um, I made my views on the podcast about it. The one thing I wouldn't do, and I know other people are, you know, putting content out around it, is it'll all boil down to the Premier League last week, average 2.8 goals per game in 10 games. There was no... Massive variance from any other year. Um, we'll build that picture up over time. It's exactly as COVID. I just never, I'm not going to change on speculation of what might happen. My my view is that this time and the Premier League have got a history of doing these sort of things where they come out gung-ho, this is the way it's going to be, and you get about five match days in and everything is back to normal. Um I'll be very surprised if we are seeing 10, 15, 20 minutes of game time extra come uh, October, November. I'm not saying that we won't, I'll just say I'll be surprised. I think you will find that it will be four, five, six minutes, um, as it always has been. Can I explain why on a paddleboard match you can green up now? One second. Uh, yeah, you can. There is there is small green there. That's just because I mean it, the the main reason being is the market expects more gold. So the prices of one two uh, and two one, obviously, um, when it's a difficult one to to say without going down a right rabbit hole but obviously we had a we had a start price of odds on over 2.5 we had a goal relatively early on i can't remember what minute it was it was about five minutes before ken got it uh, five minutes so uh earlier goals and obviously if you get goals earlier the game changes tends to open up so you get more goals so the expectancy of more goals increases um so all that's happened there is the score lines we've backed like one two now is 7.2 
So it is literally that that the market is expecting more goals. So one, two, seven point two, and two ones, uh, nine point eight. So that that is all it is. It's just that expectantly late of goals to come, and the market reacts to it um, without actually any goals coming. Um, but we'll. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't even have the market up because I uh, just sit and wait. I'm, I'm, you tend to find the one thing, another thing with correct score trades is there's actually not a lot, particularly if you're back in round one, two, two, one, two, two. Not many games have two, three goals in the first half, only, um, you know, less than 50%. So a lot of your action will become second half. But if you wanted to take a small amount of green on Paderborn, then you could. Obviously, the perfect score is uh, perfect score is one. Uh, one it to go one one. So you've obviously got two one one two and two two all covered. Uh, are the big boys playing too many games? A la Pep. Um, get paid for it, don't they? So they all get paid fortunes. They don't boycott these things and say, no, we're not doing it. Um, you know, other than United boycotting the FA Cup that year to go and put that was just to go and play another World Club Championship game or whatever it was. Um, is there too much football? Well, I, I think there's something to say there probably is. Um, but it's all, everything is just money driven. You know, they're going to expand the Champions League. Talk of Saudi teams coming into the Champions League, which almost certainly will, certainly will because ultimately money will, money will roll the roost. And the players are taking that money. The players aren't holding the, you know, they're moaning about it, but they're not going, hang on a minute, they are taking that money. Um, they're 300 and 400 grams a week. Um, it's a difficult to have sympathy for them, really. I think there's definitely a thing, and Spurs will be an example of it, Newcastle. I think there's definitely a teams who are out of Europe for a year tend to do a bit better in the league. Um, that, you know, the, the invention of, and it's, uh, you know, I said it long before West Ham won it, that invention of that other thing is just nonsense. That conference thing is just absolute. I, I know there's a, the Scott in here who say it's just absolute nonsense. We're just inventing tournaments to have more games and give people more money. That's all it is. And we'll just keep, it'll just keep going. All the while they, or until somebody makes a stand, it will just keep going. Um, and I've got no problem with it for the Scottish teams. Just take the big four or five leagues out of it. You don't need it. Don't need the Premier League having an entry into the Europa Conference League or whatever one comes next after that because positions 11 or 14 aren't getting enough money. You know, whatever your argument is, or it enables you to close the gap on the big boys, but it, what about the boys at the bottom? What about the boys then? What about the teams that finish 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th? You've got an advantage on them because you're getting European football and they're not. So why don't we just give everybody European football and have 42 different European competitions and make a complete nonsense of it all? It's an absolute joke. We're going to take the lead. Get him back in here. The old pies will be flying around there. Don't get me started. Here we go. Yeah, that's the money. The game's the game is gone. The game's the game is beyond saving. Now you just got to. And my attitude to it has changed massively in the last 10, 15 years. A massive part of my life supporting Spurs, but I've just barely paid any attention in the summer to what was going on. Um, just doesn't just doesn't interest me. For the smaller countries like Denmark, we enjoy getting visits from the Premier League. Yeah, I get that, but it's not an exhibition, is it? It's not a. It's football. You earn your right to play in things. 
Um, I think I think one of the saddest things to happen in English football is that we're jumping up and down to finish fourth. Not being and forget Tottenham teams like Arsenal. Arsenal were a team who challenged for the Premier League under Wenger. Arsenal United this that, and the other. Arsenal leaping up and down for getting fourth place. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Leaping up and down because they finished fourth for 10 or 15 years and Spurs went and done exactly the same. It's, you know, Newcastle, oh yeah, we finished fourth. Whoops. No other sport you get, do you? Who finished fourth in the Open Championship? I haven't got a clue and don't care. And the only thing that getting fourth does is give you a load of dosh. Game's gone. Watch, watch these Saudis take it over even more once they get into the Champions League lookout. See, this is my, this is you play your guitar, Klaus. People just buy me up, take their mind off the football. Oh, my, oh, Marky boy, he'll be beside himself. He'll be bursting with excitement. Right, so we're coming up to half time. Uh, I'm leaving the um, Dusseldorf game I won't do anything with. Yeah, I get yeah, that there. We're going to notice team scoring now. I do. I'm. It's amazing because I obviously get to learn who people support. I, I would never have paid any attention at all to Motherwell Hibs last night, and I was like, "Oh, what's the score?" Because uh, the lads were, uh, were Darren, a Hibs fan, uh, mad Hibs fan, and um, Dylan supports Motherwell, and then we got a Dundee supporter. I'm finding myself following these Scottish teams. Hoping some win, hoping some lose. I won't say which ones. Right, and the Groyth the Firth game, I'm not going to do anything for the minute either. Um, you could Dutch one with the remaining 0.25. You could Dutch one nil and nil one, um, but nothing's going to much happen. I might, I might just give it five minutes into the second half and see what happens there. Um, and this is the other thing with this is why I don't do a lot of correct score training because if it does say nil nil, um, I mean you could just, as I say, put the bets on and leave them, but you find yourself shuffling around a bit too much in the second half. But um, my plan will be is if it stays uh, nil nil, I will probably Dutch one nil, nil one and one nil, sort of five ten minutes into the second half. Uh, it won't get all the money back, but it risks my points risk. But if I get one nil nil one, then I'll get half my money back. Um, and then obviously, if we get a flurry of goals, we can go from there. But we'll just wait and see. In that one, just Do, do, do. Right now, you've got nothing. 15 minutes of sitting there while well, second half. We'll let this go. We'll just see what happens in the first 10 minutes of this uh, second half, and then I will let you on your merry way. Um, and then next time, we're going to do next week, we will do the over 1.5s that Tim asked for. Um, we will do some more of these, obviously, as the season goes on and football opens up, there'll become more opportunities and there'll be times when we're doing two or three things at the same time. But, uh, we're a bit limited with games today. There's only those three German games. 
didn't fancy anything in Plymouth or in the old Northwest Derby. Skin and air as the pies are flying across the terraces. Oh, I question the boy why he's not gone, to be fair. The Reebok, the Reebok uh, Stadium just around the corner, son. Get yourself down there, man up. Um, the money doesn't bother me because business, but they'll know whatever it is. It's the amount of blatant, deliberate cheating and fouling that puts me off. Yeah, totally agree with you. Totally agree with you, Ken. I mean, I've talked about that on the pod, I think, you know. That's obviously where the time things come from, you know. I mean, that, that Varane statement he put out um, about how they met with the players and they're asking too much of us. And I thought, well, if you didn't roll around the floor so long uh, and tug and pull and try and cheat your way to victory, the games would only be 92, 93 minutes. Um, and I do have no sympathy with people on TV if they've got to watch 10 or 11 all players. I think if you go as a paid fan and you're only watching 55 minutes of football, you know, there's going to be a protest at Spurs today for ticket prices going up to whatever they are. Um, I mean, every game I go to to watch Spurs now costs me about 200 quid. Uh, and you see 55 minutes of football and people rolling around. And for Spurs, 55 minutes of shit football it's been. Um, and that'll be the... Uh, uh, good question. Is it likely to be Saturday or Sunday next week? Let me just have a look and see. Um, what is it next week? It will definitely be Saturday, Tim. It will 100% be Saturday. Um, probably a little bit later. We'll try and perhaps take in the um, two o'clock ish kickoffs. Bolton play at the tough shit community. Yeah, tough shit community. Yeah, no, I know. It's always going to be the Reebok for me. You just do it with certain. Like the Spurs Stadium, I always still call it White Hart Lane. I don't say I'm going up the top of the Spurs Stadium. I say I'm going up the lane. I say, Sam, I'm going to the lane on Saturday. Watch Spurs lose to Man United. She says, what for? And in bar, no. Don't buy shirts, son. Blokes over 30 years of age. I'm thinking of lowering the threshold, but blokes over, grown men over 30 wearing football shorts. We should have some sort of, uh, we should just be allowed to shoot them, really, shouldn't we? Just take you, there you stand out. Um, oh, you're going to twicker them on Saturday, you watch another garbage team. Okay, Tim, well, we'll have the, um, we'll have the recording up. It will be, we'll be able to pick it up any time. Do, do, do. Ethan for your cane shirt. I went and bought a shirt, my missus. You know, make sure you put it straight in the bin. Tell you what you do see a lot of. Will I retract my Arsenal out of top four statement? No. Didn't say they'd definitely be out of it. I said, I think they'll find it a lot harder this season. They did. You've had one win against Forest and you got outplayed. Calm yourself. Well, calm yourself down. Absolutely not. I still maintain it will be City and Liverpool will be the top two teams. United, everybody's writing them off after a game. We'll see what they're like tonight, but he will get them better. Uh, Chelsea will, I mean, they, Chelsea have to be better. It's just a matter of how much better. Um and then you've got Newcastle, Spurs, you know, Villa. There's lots to go, son. Lots to go. Don't you don't you worry about that. I do not think I, I certainly don't think Arsenal will be second in the table. I saw somebody yesterday say Newcastle are gonna win the league like a proper journalist. He thinks so. that uh, now that City have won the treble, their focus is gonna walk. Uh, oh James, knock him out. Look, look at this. James, knock him out, son. Look, full kit wankers. Unbelievable. But no, not backtracking, son. I think I don't think Arsenal will be. I think I think Arsenal will be like they uh, like they were from February onwards. 
where teams like Villa got more points and too embarrassed to come to Dublin in June. I hope so. I'll be dancing all the way. Don't you worry. You lot have one little decent season in six or seven and get far too carried away. All of a sudden, Arteta, Arteta, you wanted out. Arteta out is now like, the, all of a sudden, he's like Pep 2. He's a Cones boy. And the chips came down, you just bottled it completely. Wigan 2-0. Oh, he's going to need oxygen. He's going to need it. Andy, pop round and check he's all right. He's going to need oxygen, the boy. Scenes, as they will say. Right, oh, I've got nothing else in them. No. Yeah, so next week we'll do 1.5 games. We'll do a little bit later. I'll we'll have to see what qualifies, but try and do a bit later so we get a few more games in. Um, you can all that Japanese and get the uh, Bundesliga, Swedish bit of Prem. Do you know, Paris to come to Dublin in June, honestly. I can't wait to get out of Ireland now. I've booked going to Ireland next year. We're going to have some unexplainable voodoo magic over here. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, no, Kyoto Senga, see, just rubbing it in with another one. Yeah. 20 minutes too late, Lens. Um, we can have some unexplainable voodoo. Yeah, no, incredible. I mean, Mark, you know, when we did the pre-season YouTube, he was waxing lyrical. Uh, and I thought he'd slightly lost his marbles. But, um, yeah, fair, reasonable start to the season. I do, I do think, irrespective of this result, I think Bolton will be up there. If we can get the um, if we can get um, up the table with that eight point deduction, it'd be amazing. The old Charlton boys. Should have kept Kirbishly. All went wrong when you sat Kirbishly. And above your station. Nice ground, Charlton. I used to go to Charlton quite a bit when they were in the Premier League and when the Spurs were playing, I used to go. Kicking off again in a minute. Yeah, as we um, as I say, the season will get going. I just think everybody, when we get back to trading, uh, topic of trading, you've just got to get yourself every day that you're involving yourself a trading plan. What games are you doing? Why are you doing them? What's your thought process? How are you going to trade them? And then you stick to that and nothing changes. And all of a sudden you'll start chipping away at process-based um, decisions and, and you will start to see, without doubt, positive results. As long as there's sound logic to why you're doing something, um, you know, you've got to ignore what other people's view, all that will never work, you know, all that shit that you get. Uh, ignore all that, stick to it, but you've got to have a plan and rules that you stick to rather than, oh, I think there'll be goals there. Chomp, got Port Vale, home to Port Vale today. Enjoy psychology. Why do some football fans wearing the full? I've no idea. I, I honestly don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, look, yeah, I, I don't get the grown. I honestly don't get the grown men wearing football shirts thing. And and his mob, old 
fourth place here. They seem to be one of the worst for it. Every time I go somewhere, get on a train or whatever, there's a bloke in an Arsenal shirt. It's like they've been sent out to haunt me. Got a bloke who walks a dog around the village with his, um, must be 50 odd, great big beer belly, lovely guy. And then all of a sudden I see him one day walking in an Arsenal shirt. Hadn't seen him, I've seen him. This is what you like, this lot. I've seen this guy walking his dogs for three or four years. I didn't see the Arsenal shirt till about January last year. January, February last year, the Arsenal shirt came out. So obviously, oh, oh we might win something. I'll get the shirt out. Been stuck down, it's covered in dust, stuck down the back of his closet. Three points today, Callum, nailed on, son. Charlton, nailed on. But no, I don't get the, um, I just do not get the football kit thing at all. I have absolutely no idea why people do it. Uh, it's a true story, the guy in the village. It's absolutely true. Love, he's a nice guy, lovely guy. He's got two retrievers. I've seen him for years walking them. Martha and Bertie walks his two retrievers. And then all of a sudden he's out. Oh, we won a few games. I'll get the old kit on. Massive great guy out here. I don't know what they look like. Got no mirrors. Somebody asked a question on Twitter the other day, and I can't remember ever seeing some. Uh, has anybody ever seen a... Uh, I've never seen a Brentford shirt. I can't recall a time, other than like going to Spurs Brentford, but walking around where I've seen Everton shirts, Villa shirts, West Ham shirts, a load of West Ham shirts around here as well. Uh, but I've not seen anyone wearing... Uh, can't recall ever seeing anybody wear a Brentford shirt. Fellow in the full kicks, Man United had a cap like Eric Bristow. Does Andy R wear one? No, Andy R's a man of class. Of course he doesn't. Talking about a, a racing man of class. He's a bit like me. He likes the old Ralphs. See, white, see. This is my subtle, see, white for Spurs today. And wear your colours still without looking like a cock. Literally in the Spurs case. Right, these games kicked off yet. Must be off and running in a minute. I'm surprised you can't hear the old um, goats. Jesus Christ, that's driving me bananas. Have I first mentioned this on the pod? A big woman down the road's kind of got a couple of goats in the garden. Bleat all day, every day from about six in the morning. <laughs> Bjorn, are we on some trades? We did a couple of correct scores, Bjorn. We backed 2-1, uh, 1-2 -1, and 2-2 two -two at Fortuna Dusseldorf, where it's currently 0-1, and um, Groitha Firth, where it is 0-0. Uh, uh, and we backed it for um, 0.75 points. I've kept 20.25 point because I might use that in the second half, particularly in the Groitha Firth game. Um, yeah, I've not, I don't know I've talked about this on the pod. It's driving Sam mental, like absolutely mental. We've got the council involved and everything. This woman's gone and got two goats. She's not fully here. Uh, yeah, and they're in the newsletter as well, Beyond, which you subscribe to and read religiously line by line. Um, but yeah, they, um, yeah, the goats are flipping dearie me. Right, he is driving Sam. I lock myself in here, but he's driving Sam mentally. It is nonsense. Who goes out and thinks, I know what we need, a couple of goats in the garden. She's got a Shetland pony as well. She's got goats and she, I mean, she had the Shetland pony a while. But it doesn't make any noise. She's got goats. And, who, who goes out and gets, I know what we need, Shetland pony and a couple of goats. Absolute nuts. Um, right, we're off and running now in the second half. Let's get these uh, let's get these games going. Let's get the old goals flowing now. 
something exciting in, in correct score trades when you start to get near your target score lines in the second half is um, can get a bit more exciting then. Right, we're going to give these 10 minutes. Uh, and then what I will do, rather than just sit and talk your ears off, I will, we may go in the Roy the Firth game. Dusseldorf, we're going to wait and see. Don't need to do anything with that for a minute. Um, but then if anything happens in the games, I will put it in the Telegram room. Um, I'll let you lot go in 10, 15 minutes so you can enjoy your day. Get ready for the Lionesses tomorrow. I don't know anything about the women's football. Are they, are they favourites? I haven't looked at uh, markets. Are Wyndham favourites or Spain favourites? Let's have a quick end up. Oh, nothing in it. 2.88, 2.96, Spain marginal. I know nothing about the Spanish um, men's team. It's just Spain edging it wrongly. Okay, Zed has spoken. I, um, Scotty, also known as Zed. Oh, that's a funny old story, isn't it? Um, There we go. Right, there's the this out of this out of this. I mean, he he was a he was a nuisance at the start, but out of this, whatever we've been on here, hour and a half there with my training bet input structure, and it helped me avoid the impulse bets and avoiding the stupid bets has allowed me to be profitable. There we go. See, there is knowledge in there if people listen to it. I don't just spout nonsense permanently. Yeah, so what you'll find is that one nil nil one at Croyther further it won't move much. It won't it won't do much. But if we back nil one one nil, if it goes nil one one nil, then uh you've got that covered. Obviously you've then got your full point in the game. Um but if it kicks off goals then you get a couple more either way. Uh, for it don't go three nil. Um but you've got a the the other option you can do is sit on the nil nil, but and then play a late goal, but obviously then you you um, you're not getting involved till right at the very end, and it's difficult to get anything. So my my preferred option is to back one nil and nil one, um, and it'll kind of be at an odds that will give me about half my money back if it just if there's just a single goal. The Dusseldorf game, I won't do anything with them. What the Dusseldorf game is a game where if it stays one nil, I would probably lay a late goal. Um, 84, 84, 85 minutes onwards. If it stayed one nil, I would use the other point two five just to lay a late goal. So again, but you know your risk. You know your you know your your maximum risk is only one point. Um, you know it's different when you do sessions like this because you're doing you're taking one game out of a method in isolation. If you go back to why we entered the trade, we were getting odds of. of three to one in effect about what's been going on um two to one just over two to one brentford tattoo on a man who met in the edinburgh fringe um yeah it's uh that, um, i think i did i do i did i put it on twitter didn't i the the hearts um the hearts um Tattoo the guy I met when I went up to Spurs Preston, the boy with the hearts tattoo on his leg. Couldn't stop telling me about it. it was absolutely smashed he was, that boy. Jesus Christ, hammered. Um, might not be a good thing to admit, but I find watching most markets boring apart from the CS market. Yeah, that's a fair comment. Yeah, I don't I don't think it is a fun watching markets, isn't it? Great. I mean, some people really enjoy it. Um, I just think it is a necessity particularly for people starting out, you've got to learn how these markets move and what happens. Um, a friend of mine down in Kent bought a sheep auction once, so a keep his lawn short, save it, not any. Nutter, yeah, I agree with that. 
buy a lawnmower, mate. It's just as simple. Walk up and down for five minutes rather than having a sheep bar in your garden non-stop. Yeah, two Andy. Oh, and Andy's pulling. He's pulling another. He's pulling a Marky boy. Two nil, Andy. Yes. The boy will be. I said I need you to go around check on him. He'll be hyperventilating wherever he is. He's probably in the Dougie Bank. Is he watching it? He's going to be unbearable. I'm going to make myself. I'm going to. I'm going to make myself in hiding for a couple of days if this. Stays up. God, if they give him a pasty, if it goes 3 4 nil, I'll have to turn my phone off. Right, so that Groy the Firth game, I'm going to let it get to 55 minutes, and now I'm going to Dutch 0 1 and 1 0 for the remaining 0 0.25. I will then leave you be. Um, it is uneventful, unfortunately. Let's go back to as somebody said, it can be boring. We, we didn't have the goals flying in, but I will back that there. And then we will, if goals do go in and I do anything, I will post in the Telegram group. But the most we can lose on the, either game is a point or two points across the two games. Well, no, we're only 0.75 in the Dusseldorf game. He did call the baby Dougie. Yes. Yes, he did. He has got a lovely little cute boy called Dougie. As I said on the pod, named after a pub. I can say it now, yeah, near he's off watching the game. How many United fans have we got in? Let's just get your quick views, United fans. I didn't watch your game Monday night, but you weren't very good apparently. You're confident of beating us today? We don't win we don't win uh yeah, press the like button, Art. Yeah, that's right, Art. Tell them. Whether they like it or not, they should still press it. And you look art, he's like my admin boy, see. Good land. See, I forget all that stuff. But my mate there looks after me. Get pressing the flipping like button. Oh, I won't do it anymore. There you go. I'll keep them all to myself. Um, yeah, any United fans fancy your chances today? Can they give us a right battering? Don't even know who's in your team. Does that Anthony bloke still play? I didn't think much of him last season when I did see him. Does he get in the 11? Oh, you've signed the new boys. Well, haven't you? You've signed a new striker. He'll get you all right, old, what's his name? I'm not saying he'll get you up with City because they are streets here, but he'll get you all right, old Ten Hag, over time. A bit like Andrew Lass, I think if we stick with Andrew, he'll get us all right. And we'll just re resume normal service, slide in that lockdown. Slide in that lockdown, the old uh, goobers back down the table. Right, Groyth the Firth game. Just get yourselves ready if you are doing it. Dutch 1 0 and 0 1. Let's get that set up. Anthony is proper pence. Yeah, I have to say, I mean, I didn't, I genuinely, probably last season, I watched the least football than I've ever watched. Um, but when I did see him, I didn't really think he was much. Right, so Groy the Firth, I am placing that bet to Dutch 0 1 and 1 0. And then you've got the only other bet I would place is if Fortuna Dusseldorf stays 1 0, I will lay over, uh, lay under 1.5 goals with the extra 0 0.25 there. So I'll risk the 0 0.25 uh, later on. So at 1.5, for example. Um, you can lay 0 0.5 at 1.5 and you're only risking 0.25. Right, I'm going to leave you there, guys. If there's any updates in these games, because otherwise, genuinely, 
sitting talking for another half hour while nothing is happening. We'll bore the pants off everybody. Um, I will be back next week with one, but anything that happens in this game, if I do anything, I'll pop it in the Telegram group. Uh, I'm going to go and grab a cup of tea, have a pee, uh, get back in here, and then I'm going to make my way up the lane later this afternoon. Uh, and I will, um, yeah, any questions, newsletter out next week. I'll, um, some of you I'll see on here tomorrow. Uh, I've got a private one tomorrow, and I will see you um, next week, guys. Have a lovely Saturday. Good luck with your trading. Get a plan. Get a plan. Right, see you later.